Hey everyone, we're here with the IDI 2800 and what we've noticed is when we're running the machine we've got a little bit less air pressure than what we used to. So one of the things you want to do with a machine like this is let the material get low and if you start to see blowback up in your hopper from, from the airlock area, uh, that means that your air seals are, are worn out or, and need to be replaced. So what we want to do on this machine is we're going to open up this cover here, we're going to remove this cover, and then we're going to take out the airlock. There's a few bolts there and a hose on the back and also a chain on the front. We disconnect all that stuff and that whole airlock is going to pull out the side of the machine and we can get to our seals and replace them. Okay, so now we're down to our airlock here. First thing I'm going to do is loosen up this uh, sprocket and that will allow us to remove this chain. So a lot of times you can get this chain loose enough by just taking off that sprocket. This chain here wasn't quite long enough, so we're actually going to pop the master link here. Once we pop that, we're going to be able to disconnect that chain and remove that. So this here is the master link. You can see how it has the little clip on there. It's different than all the other links. That's what we're going to disconnect. We're just going to put a screwdriver in and pop that link off and this whole chain will come apart. So now once we get down to this part, there's two bolts on this side of the airlock and two bolts on this side. Two of those are going to lift this airlock up so that it makes a nice seal. The other two bolt to hold it in place. So we're just going to need to loosen those four bolts up. The bolt here that, that holds the airlock in place, sometimes the nut is welded underneath and sometimes it's, it's, a, uh, it's a loose nut. So you may or may not need to have a wrench underneath to hold that in place. This one here is welded on so we just need to work from the top. So now these clamps here, we're going to need to disconnect those. That hose is where the air pressure comes into the airlock. We need to disconnect that to break this airlock free so we can pull it out. Both this seal here and that hose are going to be attached to that airlock pretty tight. Sometimes the airlock will be able to pull out. Sometimes we're going to have to break that free manually to get that airlock loose so that we can pull it out. So we're going to try to pull it and see if it's going to come out. This one's stuck in there quite a bit, so we're gonna work on getting that hose off the back and breaking that seal. So if you look, we have a small gap here, but over here it's still pretty tight. The reason is, is when we slide this airlock in, there are ramps in the back down here that will lift that airlock up to make the seal. So we can't lower that side down, but that's where it's really tight right now. When you install your, your machine, it's good to leave some space in the back. That way you can get back here for maintenance and things like that. So it's going to come in handy to have the space. So this airlock was in there pretty tight. So what we're going to do is go to the back and remove the back panel to get down to that uh, hose on the back so that we can take that off. So as you can see, we have better access to the hose here now and we'll be able to break this off of that tube. Okay, so we've got our airlock out. Now this right here is the seal. That's what we're gonna replace. A lot of times you're gonna see tears in the top of the seal, nails, chunks of wood, something like that that can get in here and tear that. These look pretty good, but you can tell that they're worn because if I push on this airlock, I shouldn't be able to rotate this this easily. That just shows your seals look good, but they're worn. It's time to put in some new seals. It'll give you a lot more air pressure. So now we're down to our seal here. What we're going to do is take our half inch socket, half inch wrench, and we're just going to loosen these all up. There's six bolts on each seal. And here you can see the difference in stiffness just from taking out the old seal to the new one. You're going to get a lot more sturdy seal so you're going to have a lot more air pressure in your hose. 
So after I take out a seal, you could always put in a new seal, but if you do that, every time you rotate it, it makes it harder and harder to rotate that, that airlock. So I take out all the seals and then start putting them new. That way it just makes it easier on yourself rotating that airlock. One thing you want to check when you're replacing your seals is these steel plates here. If these plates are bent at all, you're going to want to try to straighten that out. Usually you can do that with a crescent wrench or a channel lock just to try to get it straight or take it out, put it in a vise and straighten it out, but these all look pretty straight. If these are bent and we don't replace it, the seal is not going to sit the way that it should and we're not going to get the right pressure. So now we're going to take our seal. Like I said, I always take out all of the old seals. That way it makes it a lot easier to rotate that around. And then as we put these in, these little tabs on the side, we just want to make sure that we tuck them in behind the other plate on the side there. That way they don't roll up. Just how they tuck in on the sides there. After we put that in, we're going to pop our six bolts through. Now we take our plate and we just snap that on top. So it's important when you tighten these though, you get these bolts snug. If you over tighten the seal, what can happen is we're gonna flatten down this rubber and it'll become wavy over top and it'll wear out a lot faster. So we just wanna snug these up. These are lock nuts that are on there so they shouldn't go anywhere. Just get those nice and snug, do not over tighten. As you can tell, the seals got pretty tight, so we use a two by four and a hammer to try to rotate that around. Again, that's why I take them all out, make it a lot easier on yourself when you're putting them back in. So when we get to the last seal, one thing we wanna watch for is remember these tabs, we wanna tuck those in. But now that there's a seal here behind where it is, we want to make sure that we do get those tucked down into those corners down here. If we don't do it right, sometimes these can roll up and they'll, if you've got it rolled up like that, you're not, you don't have a good seal and you're going to get air leaking there. So put that in, make sure you tuck it down around the base there and then you're good to go. Now that we have our seals back in, we need to replace this seal up top here. What this seal does is that seals up to that shredder box to make sure that we don't get any material leaking out. If you remember when we took this airlock out, it was really tight inside of there. So when we slide this back in, it's gonna fit in there really snug. So we put a little bit of Vaseline or any type of lubricant on, type, on top of the seal. That way when it slides in, the seal that we put on does not tear off when it gets stuffed in, into the airlock. So these lift bolts here, we're going to go ahead and tighten those up first. That'll lift that up. After we lift that, then we'll tighten down the, the hold down bolts. When putting your sprocket back on, make sure to put this washer in place that aligns that sprocket with the other sprockets to make sure that they don't wear. So there you have it, we changed the seals in the 2800, 
takes a couple hours, but it's a good way to keep your machine up and running efficiently, keeps your air pressure up, keeps your production up, and keeps your coverage on point. Hopefully you found this helpful. Please like and share, and reach out to us if you have any questions. For more information on your equipment, be sure to refer to the owner's manual, where page 12, you can find some of the inner workings of the machine, the names of the parts. You can also find your startup procedures, electrical operation, machine settings, and then on page 16, we have the general maintenance chart. For more information on any of the equipment or parts, products, and other services at IDI, reach out to your local branch or your local branch salesperson, where we look forward to earning your business every day.